you, Laura, for that kind introduction. And thank you for those who are tuning into this webinar here today. Um, as noted, the title of this talk is In a Pickle with Pesticide Sample Prep, Achieve Higher Recoveries with Rapid Automated Extraction of Any Food Matrix. And it's really that any food matrix that I am going to focus on um, in this talk. And that rapid automated extraction technique that I'm going to be talking about is the CEM edge extraction system. So I'll first introduce you to that edge system, and then we'll get into the data um, for those different food matrices. Now, the extraction of pesticides from food is a complicated challenge. Um, in any situation where you've got a very broad topic, such as food, Right. Let's talk about the different food stuff out there. Um, there could be high um, fat content, carbohydrates, sugars, pigments, um, different textures. Um, so all of that is going to obviously affect how we handle these um, different food stuff and the ability to extract those pesticides out of it in an efficient manner. Um, so not only is the matrix itself complicated, um, you then have pesticides where there are hundreds of pesticides regulated in our world. So um, you have a very large subset of analytes and a very challenging matrix that is very varied in many different forms. Um, so that combination alone leaves us with a very complicated challenge. Um, so this is a need in our world today to address this challenge and to find a um, simple automated method that is widely applicable. Um, and that's what we're going to be talking about here today. So with that, I want to take a step back and just talk about sample preparation as a whole because it's key to um, here at CEM what our passion is. Um, if you look at this pie graph from LCGZ Magazine um, taken a few years ago, you see that 62% of our time is still spent on sample prep. There is a big need to modernize that sample prep sector of our world, and that's what CEM wants to do. We want to provide solutions in that category, so we take that time and we make it efficient and we provide automation. Um, I don't know about um, you guys listening here today, but I go to a lot of conferences and I sit down and I listen to these talks and I'm just hoping to hear a lot about sample preparation. But the reality is that it's really kind of about that end result, right? So um, I'll, I'll sit there and I'll be lucky if I get a slide on sample preparation. And, and maybe that's because we really haven't come too far in sample preparation. We're still using fairly old techniques. And so the excitement is all there on this really modern um, analytical equipment. Um, so we need to bring some excitement, um, some modernization to that sample prep world. If you look at some of just some common sample preparation techniques here, um, we're going to talk about how there's still a lot of limitations. Um, now, this is certainly not an exhaustive list of sample preparation techniques. Um, and I'd furthermore say that for the topic here today, which is pesticides and food, that primarily we're going to be talking about catchers. Um, catchers was developed for that particular application, and it really is what we're going to compare back here today. So I just said, okay, we're going to kind of focus on catchers, and you're like looking at those limitations, and you're like, I, I don't know. Um, if we look at catchers and um, what it stands for, the first thing is um, quick, and then I say a limitation is time-consuming. Um, but the reality is um, that, you know, is catchers really that quick? Um, there's a lot of manual extra steps. There's a lot of modifications that need to be done. There's a lot of specific sample handling that we have to consider to do it just right. Um, so I challenge you to consider that maybe catchers is, um, can be time consuming. Now, the large amount of solvent, that's really more applicable to some of those other techniques, such as Soxlet. Um, I would say the catchers does use a fairly low amount of solvent, and that's not too much of a limitation there. But costly, that's also in the name, right? Quick, easy, cheap. Um, and is it truly cheap? With all these different catcher's kits and the sorbents that you need and the centrifuge tubes, that does add up per test with time. Um, so maybe there is a more rapid, more cost-effective method out there. And then the tedious um, preparation, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, you're doing a manual method. Um, it is indeed tedious. Um, so really, I do think that as we go through and we talk about the EDGE system, um, think about how it does address those limitations limitations that catchers may um, apply to this particular field. So I want to talk just a little bit more about catchers. 
Now, I am not going to get into the nitty gritty detail of um, the methods here in this presentation. Um, as I mentioned, I want to cover that any food matrix. So we're going to go through quite a few different um, sets of data. Um, so for time purposes, um, I'm going to kind of um, kind of give a broad perspective of a lot of the methods. Um, I will note, though, that we have um, application notes available on our website for pretty much any application I'm talking about here. So if you want those specific details that um, I'm not necessarily giving in this particular presentation, please log on to our website, download those um, application notes, and all those details are going to be there. Um, the purpose for the schematic that I have here is to really emphasize the number of steps that the catcher's process involves. Um, and then if you look at that in comparison to the number of steps that are involved on the edge, um, the, uh, it should be pretty clear, right? There's a lot more that goes in on a manual basis for the catcher's method where the edge is an automated system. So it's taking a lot of that component um, and doing that. Um, so right off the bat, if you look at catchers and you just look at the number of steps, you see um, that you're going to get a much more um, simplistic and efficient um, method when using um, the edge. But I want to expand even more upon um, how the edge can offer as an alternative to that catcher's method. Um, when we talk about catchers, the, I, I get it. The reason it is so popular is because it addresses multi-matrix, right, a lot of those different food stuff, and multi-residue, hundreds of those pesticides. So when you can use one method to apply to many different foodstuffs and extract many pesticides, then that is appealing. Um, that's what we want. We, we don't want to have to have all these different specific methods. Um, and so what I hope I showed you today in this presentation is not only the edge addressing the multi-matrix, multi-residue, um, but we're able to apply it to more matrices with a simple, efficient method and still be able to get all that pesticide data. Um, one thing that is not true about the catcher's method is that it is not temperature controlled, right? That first step of catcher's is a salt partitioning extraction. Um, so when you add your salts and your sample and that acetonide trial and you're shaking that up, it gets hot. It's an exothermic reaction. You're generating heat that you cannot control. And temperature is not a benefit for the extraction of pesticides. It can be a hindrance. It can lead to lower recoveries. Um, so one of the big benefits of the edge is the fact that you have complete control over that temperature and you can keep that temperature low in a very stable environment. And we've really seen that that adds to um, getting really efficient um, and good recovery values because of that temperature con control. Now, the second step of the catcher's method is that dispersive solid phase extraction cleanup step. And if you want to do a cleanup step um, on the edge, you can do that as well. You would just put that cleanup material in the cell, and then you all accomplish that all in one step. I will have an example of where cleanup was used um, later on as we talk about the different matrices. Now, what I hope you saw from the schematic is that it's a fairly simple process. Um, and Simple and efficient are two of the main keys um, here. Um, in, I, I have a five-year-old at home, and um, one of the things that she's learning to read and everything at school is repetition, right? It really helps us remember something and learn something. And I think that is true for us throughout life. Um, so I'm going to be fairly repetitive. Um, you're going to hear me say simple, efficient, rapid, some of these keys a lot during this presentation. Um, because if you take anything away from it, I want you to take that away, that we're offering you this simple and efficient um, method. Um, the edge is automated, so that efficiency should be very clear right there. We're taking out that human factor, right? We, we're taking that out and the error that's associated with that. Um, and when you do that, um, you gain efficiency um, in the automated sector. And one of the more surprising um, benefits that we found when we were looking at the data is we actually were seeing less matrix effects on the edge. Um, and I'll touch upon that a little bit later on in the presentation as well. So when you look at that schematics, right off the bat, it's pretty clear. Okay, less steps, um, and it's automated, so it's efficient. Um, but you get some of these other benefits as well. So if you're currently doing catchers in your lab, I really challenge you to consider um, how the edge might um, 
modernize and um, advance that workflow that you have. So for me, pictures speak a thousand words. Um, I could sit here and talk to you all day, and if you don't have a picture in your head of what's going on, you may not grasp that whole entire thing. And so you'll also see a lot of pictures because I like them. Um, and what here is I just picked a um, pretty vibrant extract here in paprika. And on the left, you see the catcher's extract, and on the right, you see the edge extract. Um, and I don't know about you, but my eyes are immediately gravitated right to that right. right? It's just pretty, um, clean. And um, I do want to take a quick side note, though, um, that you're probably being all oh, a glass file. That's not so used to my workflow. Um, you can collect in the edge on centrifuge tubes if you want to. So for picture purposes, I've, I've primarily got glass files in this presentation. Um, but please know that if you um, are accustomed to working with centrifuge tubes, you can still work with them. You can collect your extract on a centrifuge tube um, on the edge. Um, but Back to the picture, if you look on the catcher side, um, you've got um, all those different layers, obviously, so you would have to go and decant off that top step and then go to analysis. It's just some extra steps, some extra stuff you have to deal with that you don't have to worry about um, with the edge extraction. When that extraction comes off the edge, it's ready to go to analysis. So now I'm going to talk you through a quick video so you have a visual of the edge um, as well. So here's the edge product. You're going to see our chemist come up here. She's going to grab a Q-disc, which is our filtration disc, put that at the bottom of the Q-cup, and then screw on the bottom. Um, once um, the, the Q-cup is assembled, you can then um, weigh in your sample. It's made out of aluminum, so it's super light, so it can go on an analytical balance. The racks um, are easily slide in and out, so you can be preparing one rack um, as another one is running. A few clicks, and then your method is running. Um, so really, in the matter of seconds to minutes, you're um, prepared and your technician is then doing something else, not having to worry about the extraction because the edge is going to take place. Um, so then the um, edge is going to take that sample cup, load it into the chamber. It does run in series. So um, the extraction takes place in that chamber and it's going to run um, up to 12 samples in a row. That pressure seal comes down. It creates a pressurized environment. We then add solvent from both the bottom and the top. And then an option that we have is um, bubbling. Um, so specifically to some of the food matrices that we'll be talking about here today, bubbling is, um, adds to better recoveries. So we're going to agitate that sample via bubbling. Once the bubbling occurs, then we are going to heat and pressurize. That heating creates a pressure differential that's going to cause that solvent on the outside of the cup to disperse up into the cup. So we get a dispersive effect here too. Um, so we've got a couple different ways of agitation going on. Once sample um, temperature is reached and or hold time is reached, it's then going to drain through the Q-disc, enabling the filtration, through a cooling coil so that you collect at room temperature. And then we add our rinse. So this is just clean solvent that comes through, goes through the sample. We've noticed you just get that extra good recovery value when you incorporate in a rinse. Once your rinse is collected, your extract is ready to go. You can go and take that to analysis. But as I mentioned, we're running in series here, so we need to be cognitive of carryover. So we're going to remove the Q-cup, and then we're going to wash the system. And we're going to wash that entire fluidic pathway that saw the sample so that we ensure no carryover. So what you're going to see the system do now um, is that wash. Um, so it's going to go over to that um, back right-hand corner. Um, you see our waste bottle sitting there to the side. It then goes in, and like I said, that needle that just suspends your extract, it's going to then wash through that and um, make sure that the entire pathway has been um, washed before you move on to your next sample. Um, one of the feel-good things for me about the edge is that the sample after the extraction um, is completely dry, right? That was just minutes ago in um, solvent, and now here it is, and it's completely bone dry, and you have your extract that's ready to go for analysis. And so just looking to see what happens makes you feel like, okay, I think I really got a good extraction here. Um, so a lot of times um, we get a lot of feedback, um, positive feedback, just from that simple um, end result of uh, dry extract and um, clear particle-free um, extract. So um, again, I want to talk a little bit about the features again on the edge. And I hope that when you um, saw that video, um, that rapid and small, simple, efficient 
kind of became um, clear. Um, Rapid, um, that obviously saw it running there in that video. In real time, we incorporate in some whole times, but each method is less than 10 minutes long. Um, so it truly is indeed rapid. Um, small, it's not much bigger than an analytical balance. Um, so we should get check marks off the bat on rapid and small. Simple, we're going to um, continue to talk about that in the fact that um, there's not a lot of prep that needs to go on. Um, a few amount of steps, so it really brings in that ease of use. Um, and then efficient, because we have an automated platform, um, and then you can go direct to analysis. So I'm going to start by talking about preparation for a wet sample, in particular strawberries. Now I'm going to use that as my kind of generic um, sample for preparation here. And then as I talk about the data for the other sample types, I'll make note if there was some subtle change to this particular method in the um, preparation. But in general, um, this would be how you would deal with a wet sample. So you first want to assemble your Q cups. You're going to take that Q disc, as you saw in the video, you're going to put it at the bottom of the cup. And um, then just screw on that, cup, that bottom cup. It is um, just one thread, so it cannot be cross-threaded. Um, and um, it just goes together in seconds. Then once you've assembled your Q cup, you are then going to add your Q matrix hydra. OK, I've lost you, right? You're like, Q matrix hydra? I've never heard of that before. What's she talking about? Um, and I, I agree. Um, you probably never heard of that before. Um, Q Matrix Hydra is a um, product that we offer here at CEM. It is a polymer super absorbent that um, does an amazing job at absorbing water. Um, for us um, on the Edge product, we want to be able to remove that water from our extract because that could interfere with our analysis. So we want to make sure we get a water-free extract. And to be able to do that, we need this Q matrix hydra that is going to um, absorb that water so that it's not in our extract. Um, as I mentioned, it's extremely efficient. Um, just 2.5 grams is needed um, for a 10 gram strawberry sample. Um, so just a little bit at the bottom um, is going to do the job, and you're going to make sure that you have have a water-free extract in the end. So once in, you add in your Q matrix hydra, you would then weigh in your sample. In this case, we have strawberries depicted, and we're going to weigh in 10 grams. Once you have your sample then prepared, you then want to load it in the rack. You want to make sure that each sample that you're running, you have a vial and or centrifuge tube to collect in. Okay. So once you load your rack, then you just need to select your method and you're good to go. So literally in the matter of minutes, you're running and that technician is freed up to go do whatever else they need to do. Once your extract is completed, um, I do want to note you want to confirm volume. If you are doing quantitative analysis, you need to know what your final volume is. So you're either going to need to dilute up to a known volume or to concentrate down to a volume. And um, CEM can help assist you in either of those. Um, as you see pictured here, you see we offer graduated vials. Also, the centrifuge tubes are graduated as well. So you could just dilute up to a known volume using those graduations. Um, if you did want to concentrate down, we do offer our Q-Dry product, which enables you to do that um, evaporation. But I'd say for the pesticide analysis, in most cases, diluting to a known volume is what is, um, is, is fine, and it's what we do um, for our data that we'll be referring to in this particular um, webinar. You then, once you've diluted up to a known volume, you transfer to an LC or a GC vial for analysis. Um, I will make a note there on the slide. I say transfer to LC vial. All the data that um, I'll be talking about here today is LC data. Um, but you are not limited by this sample prep to LC amenable pesticides. Um, whatever your current workflow is, whatever analysis you're doing, whether it's LC or GC, you would follow that same sample prep um, for then going to analysis. So I like to keep myself honest and put up the um, analytical method that we ran. Um, we have a triple quad UPLC in our lab, and that's all the data that I'll be talking about here today, with the exception of the T data, was done in our labs and using this method. So if you come back 
and you refer to um, this webinar, you can see, okay, this is the method that was run for this data. Um, and I like to put that up there just so you have reference of that. Um, but as I mentioned, whether you're using a GC or an LC, whatever analytical method that you currently have set up in your lab, that's perfectly fine. I do also like to put up a chromatogram so you see that we have do good chromatography. And um, we are doing MRM transitions for our LC here. And so you see that we have good peak shape of the selected pesticides here. So again, just want to keep us honest that so we've got good analytical data that we're talking about as we get into all the numbers later on. So I mentioned that I was going to start talking about um, a wet sample and particularly about strawberries. Um, in the world of extraction, you want to be able to refer back to a CRM, a certified reference material. Um, and unfortunately, in the world of food, there's just not that many CRMs available. Um, but um, FAPIS has been um, coming out with some CRMs, and there is a strawberry CRM, so we're very happy um, to be able to have that and to work with that. I will note that the strawberry data is using a CRM. However, all the rest of the data that I will present here today is um, spiked data. Okay, so we're doing the strawberry CRM, starting off with that, but note that the rest of the data was from um, spiked procedures. So I'm going to use, continue to use strawberry as the example as we talk through the methods, and I'll make subtle notes if we change this method in any way for the other matrices. Um, this is just a screenshot of um, the software on the edge, so you can kind of see how you can interact with it and um, set up your different parameters. So you, as the user, have complete control of um, everything going on, and so what we're going to present here is the method that we've developed to give us the optimum recovery values and RSD values for the data that I'm presenting here. But I will note that you have the opportunity to method develop that down to specifically meet your needs in your lab. Um, this is a really great starting point, right? We've done a lot of work to say this is going to work. Um, but you have some um, ability to say maybe lower the volume or um, increase the hold time, whatever you want to do, um, you have that ability to do. In this particular method, we have found that two cycles were the most advantageous. And the second cycle actually is a rinse only. So you saw that rinse in the video where we added um, just solvent after the initial extract had been collected and rinsed that through the sample. And what we found is by doing a second rinse, we really just get that bump and really good recovery values. Um, so now I want to zoom in a little bit and talk about the specific steps occurring for the um, first cycle, which is where most things are going on. As I mentioned, that second cycle is just a rinse. Um, so we, the solvent we're using is acetonitrile with 1% acetic acid, acetic acid. So the same solvent that you use for the catcher's method is used. We are going to add 10 mils from the top and 5 mils from the bottom, and then we're going to rinse in this cycle with 5 mils. So the total volume Everything going on with cycle one and cycle two for this method is 30 milliliters that is finally collected in the end that you take for analysis. We are then going to bubble this particular method for one minute and then hold at 40 degrees C for two minutes. Um, so that's the method parameters here. As noted, you can set these to whatever is best for your particular setting in your lab. I do like to um, talk about the wash parameters as well, um, as carryover is indeed a concern, and we want to make sure that um, we are having no carryover. So for this, we're just washing with seed and I trial. Um, 10 mils is sufficient. We hold it for a very short time of three seconds at 40 degrees C. But again, I want you to note that you have control of all of those factors, and you can do up to five washes. Um, so you have a lot of ability um, to make sure carryover is not a concern. So we talked about the method, so let's talk a little bit about the data. Um, in a webinar back in February, I briefly talked about some of the strawberry CRM data, um, kind of put some of that preliminary data up there. And at the time, um, we were showing comparable results for extracting 5 grams to catchers. 
Um, and so now um, we've had that ability of we've um, added that bubbling feature and we're doing multiple rinses and that has enabled us to increase that sample size to 10 grams. Um, and so now we're getting better recoveries, better reproducibility, and can accommodate a larger sample set by adding in these features of agitation and multiple rinses. Now, I do want to note that strawberries is like the perfect sample for catchers, right? It's, it's like basically what catchers was developed for. So you would expect the catchers would work really well for strawberries um, because that's really what it was designed to do. Um, so in this case, yeah, I mean, the catchers um, recovery data is also good, um, but we get comparable results on the edge. So you get all those added benefits of simplicity and efficiency, um, as well as you get comparable results for these types of samples that were developed for catchers. So um, this picture kind of just brings home that, um, that the bubbling is really giving a big advantage, right? So what is pictured here is you have on the left where bubbling was um, done and on the right where no bubbling was done. So it's the only difference in the method. One had bubbling, one did not have bubbling. Um, and really, if you look at the extract itself, is that what you see, is that when we bubbled, we mixed up that sample with the Q matrix hydra. When we didn't bubble, none of that mixing occurred. And so when we are able to mix and we get that Q matrix hydra um, all um, mixed up with the sample, we're seeing um, more consistent and better recovery values. Um, so this is, again, just a picture kind of really shows the process of what went on. Um, so now I'm going to jump into some other sample matrices, um, and I'm going to continue on with some wet foods that are very applicable to the catcher's method. Um, so here we are looking at cucumbers, um, and what we can see is that we get comparable results to um, the catchers for recovery and RSD values for cucumbers. Um, and I, I do want to note that as we're running this in our lab, I'm always going and asking our chemist, I'm like, what are your pain points? Because I want to understand that, right? And I want to understand, um, it, are we truly answering the problems that we're saying we're addressing here? You know, because um, I want to make sure that I'm being honest to you guys and I am pitching what is reality. Um, and indeed, the chemists always go back to, yeah, we love running the edge. <laughs> the edge is simple, um, you know, really quickly done, knocked out that data. Um, where when they have to run the catchers, it's a little bit more like, okay, yep. Deep breath, got to do a lot of work today, um, get the catcher's data out. Um, there's certainly more pain points for them involved um, to get, you know, to be able to generate this data for you guys um, where we show that we get comparable results for these matrices. So now we're going to move on to tomato, and it's going to be that same story, right? We're going to get similar recovery values and RSD values when compared to catchers for um, the tomatoes. And if we move on to green peppers, we also see that same. So these types of matrices that were developed for catchers, these peppers, tomatoes, cucumbers, strawberries, um, basically when you homogenize it and you get a liquid slurry or something um, that's really great for the catcher's method, um, we are able to take those same types of matrices, run them on the edge with a very simple procedure and get comparable results. Um, so now I want to switch gears a little bit, right? So we talked about those wet samples that compare um, very well to the catcher's method. Um, the same cannot be true for dry samples. Um, that first step of the catcher's method um, is um, the water is necessary to make that happen. So when you don't have moisture in your sample, it's a bigger challenge um, on um, with the catcher's method. Um, so I'm going to... Um, briefly talk about some spice data and then talk about some tea data for our um, dry samples here. I do want to note that I'm not going to spend a large amount of time talking about the spices because I covered that in a webinar back in February. That is still available on demand. So if you are curious about all the nitty gritty details on the spices, please go back and um, download and watch that webinar because that was the focus there. I'm just going to briefly touch upon it here today. So I do want to bring up the catcher's method here and talk a little bit about the details because as I noted, catcher's really is not 
as the AOAC approved method, amendable to dry samples. Um, we do make, need to make a few modifications um, and basically we've got to hydrate it. So I'll refer to it as a hydrated catchers method. Um, so you basically got to add that um, water in so that you have a um, hydrated sample. And then also we're going to take that 10 grams that we've been running for all those wet samples down to 2 grams. So we're going to make those two modifications. But in general, what already was a tedious um, method with a lot of steps, we now are adding more steps and more time to make it amenable to these dry samples. If you look at some of the spice extracts here, um, what you see is that um, we worked with black pepper, oregano, paprika, cinnamon. We get a nice clear extract ready to go to analysis, um, really nice and simple. Um, you know, actually less steps than what we talked about with the wet sample because because these samples on the edge are dry already, you don't need the key matrix hydra. Um, and you also don't necessarily need that bubbling step either. So some of the um, added um, stuff on a very simple method for the wet foods is even simpler um, for the spices. So we kind of go that opposite direction where the catchers gets more complicated and the edge actually gets easier. Um, and I like to show this picture as well and make a note that clearly we were not doing cleanup here, right? We were, we, there's a lot of vibrant colors going on. Um, so for the data here, we actually, extraction alone, we, you know, we found that we didn't actually need to get, um, do cleanup to get good results. Um, so that's something to be said too, that you can, in a lot of cases, not even worry about that cleanup step at all. If we look at some of the data, and this here is just paprika and cinnamon um, compared to catchers, now we have a little bit of a different story. Um, we know when we were doing the wet samples, we got comparable results to catchers, but now with the dry samples, we're actually getting better results. So across the board, we get better results for these dry samples. Um, and these are hard samples. Paprika, cinnamon, black pepper, um, oregano are very challenging samples to extract. And we've got one very simple method and are getting better results when compared to catchers. But I'm going to move on from the spices and talk about a different matrix than we have addressed before. So T is um, some new data for us, and I will note this is the only data that I'm presenting here today that was not done within our labs. Um, and that is, you know, that's a big point there, right? Because um, we want to be able to run outside of our doors because that's going to be, you know, unbiased and also we can run in a lab set up for pesticide analysis so we can broaden our horizons of what we're capable of doing. One of the biggest critiques that I get from my webinars and the application notes we put out is why did you only address a small subset of pesticides? And, you know, at CEM, we're an instrument company, and we are definitely going to get proof of concept for our applications, but we're not a pesticide lab. It's challenging for us to deal with hundreds of pesticides because we're constantly doing multiple different applications. Um, so when we're able to go and run outside our doors in a lab that is set up to do hundreds of pesticides, we can get that validating data to show that, yeah, we can do that small subset of pesticides, but we'll expand that to a very large list as well. So that's really the take home of what I want you to see as we go through this long list. And again, um, I always kind of, they're kind of like, we want to see it, right? So I'm going to take you through five slides here of pesticides. I want to make it visible so you could see it um, of the different um, sets of pesticides that we were able to run in this tea. And please keep in mind that this tea was all these um, over 100 pesticides were spiked into one sample. So in one sample, we were able to, in less than 10 minutes, get that extract and then go on to UPLC analysis. And I think our UPLC method is something like 15 minutes. So in less than 30 minutes, this data that I'm presenting here today was in our hands. Okay, so that's a really, really quick turnaround. This is great for an R&D environment. Um, and if you noted on the first slide of all this data, I had mentioned that we had used our Q screen. Um, now, our Q screen is an accessory to the edge. Um, basically, what you do is you insert the screen um, on top of your sample to keep the sample compressed and at the bottom of the Q cup, which leads to um, good results. And for a sample such as T that can float, 
you know, if you kind of make yourself a cup of tea, you'll notice that if you've got loose tea, it's going to float some of it. And you don't really want that floating to occur during the extraction. It doesn't aid in um, good results. So the Q screen can be used to keep that sample compressed and at the bottom of the Q cup. Um, so that is really the only change we made to this particular method um, compared to what we used in the spices. Um, now, in all the data that I'm presenting here today, um, I'm wanting to draw it back to comparing to catchers. So what I did is took the data that um, overlapped with the pesticides we had in our lab and then compared it to um, our catcher's values. And you see that same story we saw for the spices and the fact that we actually get better recoveries for this dry tea sample than we did when compared to a hydrated catcher's method. So please, please note that we are doing our best to make sure we're getting the best catcher's values possible for that. So I also noted that um, one of the more surprising aspects we found is that we are seeing less matrix effects on the edge as well. Um, so what you see here are two um, TIC chromatograms. The green one is that of the edge, and the red is a hydrated catchers of this tea. And what you note is that um, obviously there's less matrix effects going on with the edge. And if you particularly look in that nine to 10 minute range, you really kind of see where those pesticides that we're picking up on the edge were not seen nearly as clearly due to the matrix effects for the hydrated catchers. Um, so this is something we're going to continue to explore um, and see what types of matrices really benefit from, from this and, and really um, what types of, you know, this reduced matrix effects we really can offer. Um, but this is really encouraging and um, is even just yet another benefit to the edge. So we talked about wet samples. We talked about dry samples. And now I want to talk about some of those difficult ones that are kind of in the in-between, right? So you take that method we talked about, and that's going to apply to those food stuff that when you homogenize them, they're a kind of liquid sample. And then we've got our dry samples that have no moisture at all. Well, that in-between, I really kind of refer to them as like those samples that when you homogenize them, they kind of create a paste. Um, those tend to be the more challenging ones. And I'm going to start with avocado because I think that's pretty much an iconic, difficult matrix, right? It's got a lot of fat. It's, it's a difficult one to work with. Um, so as we look at this avocado data, I do want to note that we did make um, a few changes. The first change we made is instead of a 30 mil extract, we did a 40 mil extract here. So we added an additional five mils to our top volume and five mils to our bottom volume, um, bringing our total up to 40 mils than the method that I presented for strawberries. And then also we are going to mix the sample with the Q matrix hydra. If you can kind of, you know, vision the fact that if you've got the, the liquid slurry of strawberries and you bubble that with Q matrix hydra, that's going to mix up because it's pretty easy to mix that liquid sample. Um, when you've got that avocado paste after you've homogenized this, um, it's not so easy to bubble um, a paste. <laughs> so um, what you need, if you just premix that sample a little bit with Q matrix hydra, then um, that aids into um, better results. Um, so if you look at the results of the avocado in comparison to catchers, you see that same story you saw for actually the dry foods, that we actually are getting better results. Um, so that's a huge benefit. So not only do we get comparable results to the matrices in which catchers was developed for, these ones in which catchers struggle with are actually getting better results. Um, so that was um, some great findings and really pleased um, with the avocado data. So now let's move on to a different matrix. And in this case, we're going to talk about blueberries. Um, and what we found when we were running with the blueberries is that um, there, was, there was some need for cleanup. They were very highly pigmented. And um, we found we added just a layer of PSA, we were able to get um, improved results. Um, same story is true. We are getting better results for these blueberries on edge than we do with our catcher's results. Um, and for when cleanup is the um, answer, a picture speaks louder um, than my words here. And to be honest, this was surprising to me. We added just a little bit of PSA, and um, the difference is dramatic. Um, so the um, one there on the left is when we use cleanup, and on the right was when we didn't use cleanup, and the difference should be clear um, there. And so just that little bit of cleanup went a long way towards leading to um, us getting um, optimal results for this blueberry 
extract. So the final matrix that I'm going to talk about here today is cranberries. And um, kind of an interesting story with the cranberries. So I looked at the date of this webinar, and I was like, oh, it's right at the start of the holiday season. I'm like, we got to do a festive sample. And um, so cranberries are kind of an iconic um, festive, you know, food stuff that we think of this time of year. Um, but I didn't know how the cranberries necessarily were going to behave. Um, and what we found was kind of interesting in that we already had the avocado, where we talked about we needed to mix that sample with Q-Matrix Hydra, and we had the blueberries where we needed to add a little bit of PSA. And it turned out in the end that combining those two was the answer for the cranberries. Um, so it fit in just perfectly to um, everything and makes us feel a little festive as well. So um, we, what we did here is we added a layer of PSA, and then we mixed up that sample. So the PSA just sits right on top of the Q-Matrix Hydra as you're preparing that sample. And then as you're mixing it, you're actually mixing up the PSA and the Q-Matrix Hydra together. So that's how that would work. Um, and then the same story. We get better recoveries than compared to catchers for this cranberry sample. Um, so I just want to reiterate a little bit here kind of those sample preparation tips that we've talked about as we've gone through the different sample matrices here. So if you have a wet sample, Q-Matrix Hydra is going to help you remove that water. If you have a sample such as tea that's going to float, that Q screen, and you see that pictured there, so you basically put that screen at the top of the Q cup and then you use a tool to insert it down into the bottom of the Q cup. Um, and that keeps it compressed at the bottom of the sample. So any kind of sample is going to float. That's going to help aid in that. Then if you have a sample like avocado, those paste-like samples, you're going to want to pre-mix that sample with the Q-Matrix Hydra um, prior to extraction. And then for samples like blueberries, where um, some cleanup may be needed to get the best results possible. Um, so what I want to note here is that these tips primarily are on how you prepare that Q cup. Right? Um, really, we're not making many changes at all to the edge method. So you pretty much have one universal method on the edge that you can run, and then you just need to adapt your prep um, with these subtle um, tips here on how you would prepare that particular sample for analysis. So I hope what you've heard here today is that the edge can achieve good recoveries for a number of different foodstuffs. We've talked about strawberries, cucumber, tomato, green pepper, spices, tea, avocado, blueberries, and cranberries. So hopefully that gives you a fairly broad subset of what the edge is capable of doing. Um, and we continue to expand upon that um, daily here. Um, and pretty much any sample that we have um, tried to run has um, worked just fine. Um, I also hope you see that we achieved equivalent or better recoveries than when compared to catchers, and using things like Q-Matrix Hydra, the Q-Screen, or Cleanup can help really ensure the best results possible. And now back to that repetition a little bit, right? I want to talk about that rapid, simple, and efficient extraction method for pesticides and food. Because if you don't remember anything, remember the edge is rapid, simple, and efficient, because that's what it's giving you. Um, that advantage, in addition to hopefully I've qualified the data there as well. Thank you for listening.